Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Clark from the Center for Weight Loss Success. And on this podcast of Doc Weight Loss, we're going to talk to Dr. Dawn Reese, who's one of the clinical psychologists that works with many of our patients concerning weight and overall health. We'll be right back. Hello again, everyone. This is Dr. Clark, and yes, on this podcast, we're going to be talking to Dr. Dawn Reese. And say hello, Dr. Reese, for us. Hello, Dr. Clark. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing very well. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about stress, and stress is problematic for just about everyone. We all deal with stress in day-to-day life. Stress affects weight, too, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, how stress can affect weight, as well as some of the things we can do about it. Now, Dr. Reese, you know, we often talk about stress and really kind of what is stress. We often say, well, stress really is kind of a reaction to change. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, a lot of times when people think about stress and they talk about stress, they think of the negatives, you know, um, somebody died or I got an F on a paper or something like that. But stress is really just any change. That's why it's so important to make sure that we recognize that, manage it, because that's an everyday part of our lives. We can't get away from change. So that's why we, we talk about stress as change. Right. Stress can be both negative and which we often think of the stressing often negative, but it can also be positive stress too, right? Absolutely. The, one of the most po- positive stressors or one of the, the highest stressors are weddings, um, let's see, getting a promotion, having a baby. Those are all wonderful things, but it's huge change. Um, and so when we talk about stress, it's, we've got to remember that it's both positive and negative and that our body just doesn't know the difference, so it treats stress as stress as stress. And so that becomes... Just just kind of some of the basics of what stress is, kind of how does it affect their body, and kind of, let's kind of move into then the, the, the stress effect, and how does it then affect weight? Well, in a couple of different ways. One of the biggest ways is that, um, as you and I have talked before, most people stress eat. So we're eating more because we're stressed. Um, And then that starts a whole reaction. And of course, you probably speak better to this than I do, but it really, you know, stress releases cortisol. And then, you know, um, the cortisol, when you eat, when you're stressed, it actually deposits the weight in the stomach area. And we see a lot of people with a lot of stomach, extra stomach weight. Um, So in addition to not only eating more um, because you're stressed, there are some chemical changes that occur during stress, um, during those stress times and that fight or flight sy- syndrome, syndrome, if you will, um, that cause people to retain weight. Right, it's kind of that, that fight or flight is kind of, gee, am I, when I get stressed, what am I going to do? I need to run away. Well, nowadays we don't need to run away from the saber-toothed tiger or anything like that, but it really is just that day-to-day thing where it, it could be our job, it could be at home, our relationships, our kids, whatever it is. There are lots of things that stress affects, and as you mentioned, kind of cortisol is one of those main stress hormones. When we talk about stress hormones, we sometimes talk about adrenaline, and that's that immediate thing is my, gonna, my heart rate goes up and I'm ready to jump out of the way of the truck if it's trying to barrel, uh, you know, run me down. But then it's also that chronic stress, okay? and so that chronic stress is the cortisol levels. And the cortisol levels, if they run a little high, it kind of, I'm going to say a simplified version of cortisol is that it kind of tells our body to refuel. And even if we don't need to be refueled, so even we don't need to store fat, but actually our body's being told to store fat by the cortisol. It kind of turns on all those mechanisms. And just like you mentioned, it often is that, that truncal obesity, kind of especially around the belly, the, the, and that's the unhealthy fat. So kind of stress is very important, obviously, in our life. Exactly, and, and just to point out what you were talking about a minute ago, that 
we don't have to run away from a saber-toothed tiger anymore. Our stresses are really very um, sedentary. We, we don't do a whole lot. We're on the phone or we're dealing with something. Um, but our responses are ancient. And so the response is for everything to be released so that we can refuel after we had to run away from the saber-toothed tiger. But now we don't have to run away and uh, there's not the energy being expended. So what's left is that we're trying to refuel something that doesn't need to be refueled. And that's exactly what you're saying. And so the chronic stress is um, the daily hassles and the daily, you know, um, it, we don't allow our bodies to recover. We don't allow them. We just keep adding stress upon stress upon stress, and that's not good. <laughs> right, so we never really recharge ourselves or recharge the batteries there. We kind of keep running and running. It's like the, the uh, ever any battery but little bunny there. It keeps going and going and going and going, and we never actually get that recharging where everything kind of settles on down. So yeah, we're, we're all stressed. Unfortunately, there are limited things we can do because we can't get rid of every stress in our life. That'd be nice if we were all living in utopia, but it typically doesn't happen that way. So what can we do about it then? You know, how do we control this? There are lots of things I imagine, lots of ideas we can do. Absolutely. Um, and one of the favorite ones is exercise <laughs> because exercise promotes a chemical response in the brain and the body that helps reduce the stress. Um, we can talk to other people. That has also been shown through research to reduce, reduce stress, but also in parts of our brain. It shows that it will help decrease anxiety. Um, we can meditate. We can um, do all kinds of things to help reduce our stress of our daily lives. And, and humor, um, sex, um, support, you know, like I said, talking to professionals, but talking to friends, going to friends and just complaining for a few minutes and saying, okay, let me let this go. A lot of times we hold on to stuff that we don't need to hold on to. We make things more important than they need to be in, you know, in our lives. And we, we kind of make ourselves look crazy. <laughs> so um, if we can step back and start saying, what's really important? What's the priority? What are our priorities and what can we do um, again and start just calming down a little bit and not thinking that we have to be available to everybody at all times. Um, that's also another thing that happens in today's society is with technology we think we have to be available at all times and that's not necessarily true either. Um, sleeping is another great, drinking our water, making sure we get our vitamins. Um, all of those things are wonderful things to in the big scheme of managing stress. It's not just one thing that is going to take care of all of it. You've got to incorporate several different tools into your stress management um, regime. Exactly. And kind of a, a, a thing we've talked about in the past too is sometimes uh, trying to get ahead of the stress. Meaning that you know something is coming up or you know something is arising. And, doing some simple things, just like the, the deep breathing exercises, trying to actually control yourself before you're immersed into whatever event that may be. And this can work pretty well, right? Absolutely. I have a um, couple of patients that have decided to, with their cell phones, set a timer so that every, I think one of them is every half hour, once every hour, it goes off and it reminds them to do the deep breathing. And the deep breathing is in through the nose, you hold it for a few seconds and then out through the mouth, extending the stomach. We want our stomach to get big then. <laughs> and so one of the tricks we teach people is if they're not doing it correctly, you can put your arms behind your back, you can go like this, because that again is gonna open this area where you want that breath to come out. And so absolutely, just trying to get ready for a stressor if you know it's coming is wonderful. Right, that deep cleansing breath is always a good thing whenever we're getting that stressful situation. Now, kind of that chronic thing, we, you alluded to this earlier, is some of the, the sleep things and getting good sleep. That's, you know, how we recharge. We can't go continuously. Let's, get, let's dive into that just a little bit more about, you know, healthy sleep. Well, people don't like to hear this, but you need six and a half to eight hours of sleep a night. And all, all the time I hear, well, I don't need that. I can get by on four or five. Yes, you can get by on four or five because you can retrain your body. But your body needs six and a half to eight. 
you get your energy from two sources and it's not caffeine and it's not anything else it's food and it's sleep if you're not getting it from sleep you're going to be hungrier the next day because your body is reacting and saying i need to fuel i need to fuel um so we really want you to try to start getting into the habit of a lot of people don't go to bed early enough and then they have to get up too early a lot of people um say i've got too much to do but i guess what the thinking i would like to have people start trying to to adopt is to try to say to themselves but sleep is just as important as anything else in my life and if i can make myself go to bed when i'm supposed to and really try to get into that sleeping mode then i'm going to do better the next day i totally agree with that i i don't tolerate losing sleep not nearly as well as i used to when i was younger it was okay but nowadays I don't tolerate it very well. I'm cranky and I feel like I'm just listless. It doesn't work very well. And there, I, I recently saw a study, I think, that uh, showed that people that got, you know, less than optimal sleep, was like, I think it was less than six hours of sleep, that on average they ate 200 calories more the next day. And I would totally agree with this. This just from my own life um, that I see this happen. But there, you know, I think that part is very real. So getting that good sleep is uh, can be very, very helpful from lots of different aspects. You know, sometimes just uh, developing, you know, some ways to get, you know, the, your I'll call it your self-talk. You know, we've talked about this in the past too. Your your self-talk. How do you talk to yourself? Um, and having a positive relationship with yourself that you can talk yourself off the ledge, so to speak. Um, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I, I often talk myself off the ledge. <laughs> um, absolutely. We are horrible to ourselves. We say things to ourselves in our brains that we wouldn't say to our worst enemy. We have got to try to learn how to treat ourselves with compassion. Um, and that involves retraining our brain to say, if you're saying something negative to yourself, what can you say behind it that's positive? You know, so if I say to myself, boy, my hair really looks bad today, I can say, you know, maybe, yeah, but not so bad, or maybe my skin looks okay today, or, you know, you just want to try to catch the negativity and then try to change it a little bit. You know, I, I, it's amazing to me in therapy when I hear people talk and, and what, they come, what they come out of their mouth and then they, they're almost like horrified that they said that because they realize how negative it is, it is to themselves. So we want to try to start putting positive things into our brain, um, positive things into our thoughts about ourselves, um, trying again to decrease the negativity if you're hanging around negative people, if you're watching the news 24-7, that's a no-no as well because it all seems to be negative. Um, just trying also to put more positive things in our lives and um, there's been a lot of research lately about gratitude and trying to recognize what you're grateful for, um, trying to at least, you know, at the end of the day, hey, what are some things that I've been grateful for today? That will also give you a positive outlook on, on some things instead of the old negative, what I cannot do, focus on what you can do, those kinds of things. Right. I mean, that, that is great stuff. Now, another thing that can work very well for handling stress is just kind of the, you know, working on your own little personal hobbies. Okay? I, I sometimes think exercise for me sometimes is a hobby. I feel like my life or my day is not complete if I have an exercise. I almost look at it as a hobby. But I also like to do outdoor things and I like to work things with my hands, do woodworking, that type of thing. And what do you think about all of that? I think that's a, a, a great place for people to go too, is developing those hobbies too. Absolutely. And there's a, um, there's not only connection with other people sometimes when you do your hobbies, which is so important, but there's a connection with, um, like you said, working with your hands, maybe a project being finished. There's, a, there's an attitude of I've accomplished something or getting out. People like to garden or do some, some of those things. Anything that you can do that will kind of stimulate your brain and stimulate your body um, in that way that you enjoy doing is extremely important for stress management. Because, but again, it, it goes back to the, the idea that you have to take time for yourself. You have to make yourself a priority in order to kind of decrease your stress. All right. Well, don't. I think we're going to uh, wind this down. This has been a great little discussion about kind of stress and what we can do about it. And obviously stress in our lives is very important. We'd like to handle it, but also then it affects weight, 
If you would like more information concerning this topic or literally any topics concerning overall health as well as weight, give us a yell here at the Center for Weight Loss Success. The phone number is 757-873-1880. Or a good way to get more involved, get more information is go to our Losing Weight USA website. The website is www.losingweightusa. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Take care, everyone.